Yo, 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 Big D here, and you know what that time, you know what time it is. It's time to recap my week 12 DFS catch game lineup. But before I tell you about my results, please subscribe, like, and share the Spunking Spectrum Sports YouTube page where you can see all my catch game content videos, good, bad, and ugly. Got all those online. And also check out the Big D podcast on Spotify and Apple. You can also check out my writing on the league winners. Uh, <laughs> as you know, I am a, a journalist at Hall, and uh, it feels great writing and uh, showing you my DFS content, whether it always works out, <laughs> which it always worked out. But uh, I'm glad I can I can write and uh, show off my not just my writing talent, but my DFS and fantasy talent and. You guys uh, make it big on Sunday. So, as you know, I'm a catch game nerd. And to be honest, week 12 was a very interesting sleep, especially with all these minimally running backs around 5 to 62, 6,500 was the question which backs to play. And uh, fortunately for me, I didn't play the right ones. Uh, here is my lineup, if I can put it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There. there. Let's see. Share this. Let's see. Share the screen. Uh, hold up one sec. Here is my lineup. As I pointed out in my article for the league winners, I wanted Tyrod Taylor as my quarterback. Despite only scoring 16 points, he made value, really won three, three points for every thousand dollars you spend. So for at 5,300, you would won 15, 16 points. Tyrod Taylor got 16 points. Fortunately, my running backs uh, between them only got 20.9. I mean, James Robinson was. Okay, I would have expected more than 13 and a half points, especially against a crappy Atlanta rush defense, but uh, the fumble didn't help. And Jackson really couldn't establish much of an offense early. Frustrated me, of course. But uh, Miles Sanders was one of my big bombs of the day. And with Philly's rushing attack, I thought Miles Sanders was a great play, especially without Jordan and Howard. And uh, that didn't work out too well. I mean, it really annoyed me that uh, Boston Scott took the touchdown. Sanders, yeah. Why did you take the touchdown, Mr. Scott? Why couldn't Sanders have found the end zone? But uh, another one of my uh, disappointments was Chris Godwin. I thought Godwin was a great play. 7K against the Colts Cup of Two scheme. I thought Godwin would have been great. Fortunately, Rob Gronkowski and Leonard Fournette took all the touchdowns and big plays, but um, the fumble didn't help, and only getting four receptions for 24 yards didn't help. So Godwin was a big buzz. Deontay Johnson, despite Pittsburgh being in goldfish time, still caught nine pass for 95 yards. Deontay Johnson is just a target machine. He's going, I mean, how consistent has he been? Doesn't matter if it's a blower or not. He is scoring double digits and getting double digit targets except week five against Denver. He is a week nine against the Bears. He is a double digit target machine. And Brand Cooks got a touchdown. I mean, I'd be honest with that great touchdown against the Jets. I thought Cooks would have. Not in more than 13 points, but he was okay. I said, play Jared Cook this week. And he reached value. I mean, true, Rob Kankowski would have been a better play. But Cook was fine. He got 10 and a half points. And Devontae Adams, to me, the 6.2% ownership here in this $5 giant double up is befallen because I thought Devontae Adams would have been high owned With his consistent talk and share, I would have thought Devontae Adams would have been way high on, especially in a high scoring game with the Rams. But, uh, you know, Devontae Adams can go over 100 yards and score, and score at what? 
they did that today. And the Texas defense was okay. I mean, four sacks a pick. I would have thought they could have scored more. Look at that percentage. If a lot of people use the Texans defense today, why wouldn't you? Again, Zach Wilson and company. But uh, there were a couple of regrets with me today. Probably my running backs. I mean, I wish I would have used, I would not have used James Robinson and Miles Sanders and potentially would have used Dale Henderson and uh, Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell got over 100 yards for the Niners. And I mean, I really considered using Mitchell because he would have been off of my plan B because Mitch, San Francisco loves to run the ball. And Mitchell's looked to be trending to playing. So I thought about playing Mitchell, but, ended up, but still wanted Robinson and Sanders. And Henderson could, would have been probably another 15, 20 point guy. But uh, some, that's, sometimes what do you get? The money doesn't work out when you can play all you guys in a. Unfortunately, my running backs didn't always put, didn't perform this week, but so what do you get? Sometimes your running backs go for 40, and other weeks the running backs go for 10. You just don't always know what happens. So, um, and uh, I mean, if I had, if given a second choice, maybe I would have used Rob Kankowski, but I really like Jared Cook saving that extra 1400 because that let me fill out a better roster. Potentially, that would have meant not using Devontae Adams, and I wanted somebody in that Bram Packer game. So, and the Cooper Cup at 9600 just didn't make sense, especially with Adams, a target monster. And so, I mean, in the end, it was an okay week. I mean, still one. Three, my all three, of my double ups. So I mean, not it was a middle in week. I mean, sometimes you get one of those weeks where you just scrape by and go to the next week. So I'm glad for every DFS week, and uh, I'll see you. Hopefully, week thirteen is better and lucky for us, and uh, I'll see you around the corner.